Uh, let me just introduce myself. My name's Jamie Novick. I'm here from uh, CompuCorp. We're a digital agency. We specialise in working with open source platforms. Do a lot with Civi CRM, uh, with Drupal as well. Um, we like to build complicated things using Civi CRM uh, and Drupal. Uh, work with a range of different organisations, non-profits, uh, membership organisations. Uh, do some work with government as well. Um, and we are the development team that are behind um, Civi HR. So um, what is Civi HR? So Civi HR is the project to create a really great uh, an open source HR platform based on top of uh, Civi CRM and actually Drupal. Um, so where did the project come from? Um, so the project is the brainchild um, of uh, a charitable foundation uh, known as the Zing Foundation uh, based in London. Um, and um, the Zing Foundation are a grant making organisation, so they, they, they would pass out grants to various uh, charities, uh, which are their partners. Um, and they were handing out grants uh, to, to non profits, some of which to invest in improving their IT. Um, and what they found is that, uh, you know, the Charities would invest that money in IT platforms, but they wanted to find a way in which to make that money go a little bit further. So they said, okay, well, we can hand out a £10,000, £15,000 grant to a, a non-profit organisation and they can buy an IT platform off the, off the shelf, um, but it would be great if we could do a little bit more. Um, and so uh, they looked around and they saw Civi CRM as this open source product that's used by thousands of different organisations, and they thought, wow, that, that's really great. Uh, and for a number of years, they were actually uh, funding some of Civi CRM development as well. Um, and, uh, and then they said, well, I think we, we can do a bit more. So we would like to create our own open source uh, system, maybe a new system that could also be as beneficial as uh, Civi CRM could be. Uh, and they looked around. Uh, I imagine at this point they got very drunk, uh, stayed up until about four in the morning, uh, tried to decide which system they were going to go with, uh, and they decided on creating an HR system. Um, because I think HR systems are very complicated, so they bit off a lot at that point. Um, and so the City HR project was, was kind of born. Um, so in a roundabout fashion, they came to, uh, they came to CompuCorp and they said, OK, we know that you guys do work with Civi CRM. Uh, this is what we want to produce. We want it to be very similar. Um, you know, can, can you do it? Um, and yeah, maybe I was drunk at the time as well, and I said yes. So, um, so uh, that is the story, exactly as it happened. Um, so, why an HR system for nonprofits? Well, uh, you know, I don't think this slide with three points on it really, really explains it. I think nonprofits, it's a really challenging environment in which to uh, recruit and to retain, retain staff. Um, high proportion of staff with non-standard working hours, nonprofits tend to have very flexible working patterns. You probably have volunteers as well who are on complicated work patterns who, who aren't based at, at, you know, in the office doing various different things. Um, you know, how do you manage that? Um, it means that there is high complexity, obviously, small budget in terms of what the IT spend operationally is going to be. Um, it's a competitive jobs market for skills as well, uh, and charities. I, I mean, I, I don't always think it's the case, but sometimes they, you know, it's, it's conceived to be the case that charities find it harder to compete with uh, yeah, enterprises and organisations. I don't think that's necessarily always the case. But, um, and the reality of HR systems, a bit like you know, in, in some cases CRM, is the fact that you know, the, if you, if you have complicated needs, there are only complicated, ex expensive you know solutions out there. So once you peek out at what the off the shelf, you know, okay, I've got this low cost uh, HR off the shelf. Once you have more complicated needs, um, they're not really able to to support that. Um, so the project is to do something about it. Um, so I mentioned that we've got, uh, this is just some of, some of the uh, organisations that we're working with at the moment, but we've got about 37, uh, I'm not calling them pilots anymore, 37 organisations using Civi HR at the moment. Um, so we're in what we would call public beta at the moment, so it's open for anybody to sign up, it's downloadable on the internet as a free, uh, as it's open source, but we very welcome you to sign up to the hosted version. Um, and uh, it's going to be uh, open for people to sign up and freely hosted until I think it's about April of, of this year. And then in April for the hosted version, the plan is to charge one pound per user per month. So hopefully that's quite affordable. Um, and uh, volunteers, because they're transient, would also be, be free of charge. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end and stuff. Um, 
So let me explain a little bit about CVHR. I, I'm, I'll, I'll probably dip in and out of the, the slides. Um, so CVHR is split into two sides. Um, there is the <coughs> HR admin side of CVHR. Um, and that's for your HR manager, operations people, you know, like actually we need to see all the data about, you know, the things that are going on uh, and we can control all of that data and, and that's kind of the, the more, uh, the detailed part of things. Um, and then you also have the self-service portal. So the self-service portal is then for all the staff to log into and that's places where people can update their own details, request leave and, and all of those different bits and pieces. Um, so, um, I'll dive a little bit into CVHR in a second, but um, what do we have in the admin side of things? Uh, and this is the currently released version. So I'll just log in here. Um, yeah, I'll do the CompuCorp one, why not? Actually, I'll, I'll do the demo side. Show you all of our HR data, so it'll all get videoed. Oh. So there's a demo site that you guys can go to on, on the CVHR <coughs> website. You can just link to it and it'll take you in. So um, when you log in, um, you get your task dashboard. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that in, in a moment. Um, but if we go and have a look at a contact, it's very similar to the way that you would navigate around CVCRM. Um, so just searching for a contact. Here we've got um, Peter uh, Godey. Um, and we've got kind of like an overview of Peter. There'll actually be a leave block in, in the new version. Um, and we can have a look at Peter's job contract. Got an internet, don't escape me now. Please, please come back. Yeah, got it. Um, so you're able to store uh, somebody's job contract details. So uh, the job contract, all the legal information about that person's employment with you. Uh, so everything, you know, position title, but uh, includes their pay. Uh, details uh, and actually their leave, annual leave entitlements as per their contract, pension, all of those kind of things. Um, the reason that it's kind of wrapped up in this contract, you can also store the actual document itself. So if you have the document, you kind of store that with it. Um, the, um, the reason we wrap it up like this is because you have a history when this loads. Oh, the internet's really not going to be my friend today, is it? Um, well, if we change the terms, let's see if we can do this. Um, so if we were to change the terms and say, ah, oh, this person got a promotion to 70,000 um, pounds, and let's say actually their level, they went from area manager to area senior manager. Let's try that. Save and make a new revision, proceed. I'm gonna say the reason for the change is a promotion. The effective date is yesterday. So that's what's happened. That's fine, I'm happy with that. Save it, hopefully it's now going to, oh, this is a little bit complicated, we'll come to that in a second. Yeah, save me on title, that's my favorite one. So now our job contract, in the history you can see that I've got a new revision of the contract has kind of been made here. So the idea is that all the promotions and things, you keep all that history, uh, and you can go back to the old version of it and just have a look and say, oh, okay, I want to load this. The internet's gonna to be too slow for me today, I think, so I'm, I'm not gonna mess around too much with that. Um, so that's kind of like the job contract, and that's like the basics of putting in, you know, your, your data in the system. Um, uh, job roles, so, oh, the internet. So similar to the job contract, we also have this concept of a job role. So it's all the non-contractual stuff. Um, so this is where we would kind of store location, region, department, uh, you know, any, you know, where they work and things like that. Uh, any funding information about somebody's role and cost centers that uh, apply to kind of funding that role. So again, pe people can have more than one job role though. So people can be in multiple job roles. Some people have like 50% on this and 50% on that. So we feed all of this data um, into the system uh, and then we have this wonderful reporting. Should have opened all the tabs in advance. Yeah. Do you want to risk using 4G? Okay. 
Sorry, guys. Which wireless network are you on? I am on ACC Wi Fi. See the one that's got the word one in it? Uh, another one, and it's really very strong. Conf one? No, not that one. One Wi Fi? Oh, right. Uh, is it the same password? It's or? lowercase everyone. Yeah. Where did you find that? Tesco reception. <laughs> Outrageous. <coughs> it's really quite fast. <laughs> she was just sitting there like this. It's all, all, all good. Okay, cool. All right, so um, let's go to the. Yes, wow. <laughs> Much better. Cool. It's like using the real internet. Um, so once you put all of this data in, you're able to create reports on it. That, you know, that's kind of like the whole point. Um, so we've got this quite cool, um, it's, it's a pivot table library. Don't let all the fields um, scare you. Um, who, who's made a pivot table before in their lives? You say that. There's a lot of people who haven't you know, made pivot tables who I have this conversation with. Um, so um, basically, um, the system will, you know, it's telling us total number of staff is 99. But if I want to drag and drop something, let's say roll location, now it's immediately done like our little pivot on you know the location field, um, and then I could kind of say, okay, well, what about uh, gender? So here, uh, oh no, I think we should have some data for gender. Really, I suppose we don't. That's interesting. Uh, let's try. Uh, let's do pay grade. <coughs> So now it's kind of pivoted on the locations along the top and told us how many people are in each pay scale and so on and so forth. And so, you know, you, you can create your pivot tables out of this, dragging and dropping, and, and that's really cool. Um, and you're actually able to save configurations of those pivot tables. So now I've done this, I could do save as new, and this is my new table, but I might take some examples. So here I'm actually doing average pay by department. So actually the function I've done is average contract pay amount, and I've done it by department and contract type. And so starting to like really look into, into that sort of data. Um, you're able to create some fancy graphs as well. So age group by level. Let's try that. Oh, yeah, we've got some graphs, light graphs, um, or charts. Uh, employee age by department. So it seems like everybody is less than 25 years old in this organization, which is great. Um, and let's say, you know, gender by location. I thought we had some gender data, but it seems as if we didn't. So it seems like everybody's null in terms of their gender in this data, so I'm not quite sure what that is, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so once you plug all this data in, you can then report on all of it, and there's quite comprehensive reporting that you're able to create. Of course, because it's still SIVI, you can always export out all of your data uh, and import it as well in the usual, uh, in the usual ways. So that's kind of like the, the basics of, of the system. Um, so on top of that, we've got a uh, task and assignments module. So um, what is task and, and workflow? Sorry, uh, this is, is getting renamed. Um, so the, a lot of the things that you want to do, I, I would imagine, if you're anything like me as an HR manager, is dealing with onboarding and exiting procedures for people in the organization. So when a new person comes in, there's probably 25 things that you need to do. You need to make sure that they get done, uh, and you need to assign them to people in order to get them done and make sure that they actually do them. Uh, same when people leave, because if you leave, uh, obviously, their access to all of the systems, then A, you're paying for it, and B, um, that's not very secure. Um, so City HR has these tasks uh, and also workflows. So you could say, okay, this person, staff, uh, is joining. When are they joining? And you can create a series of tasks in a little workflow here. And you can actually assign these to people as well. So you might assign that one to the manager, uh, uh, that one goes to the actual staff member, and so on and so forth. So um, you can create these workflows. Actually, in the, late, in the newest version, which will come out in a couple of weeks, you'll be able to, those will automatically assign based on the, uh, the manager of the person. So you can actually say, oh, this one always goes to the manager, this one always goes to the staff member, so you don't even have to put that bit in. Um, and it'll pick up the offset as well, so you can put in and say, this has to be done one week before the starter. This, you know, send out new joiner pack needs to go out two weeks before, you know, six weeks after we should have first follow up and assign that to the manager and so on and so forth. So those um, people get a reminder about those, so they get a daily email reminder about it, um, and also um, you're able to then track 
all of these in your task dashboard. So you can say, okay, all of them, I can just look at the delegated tasks and see who's doing those. You can remind people about tasks, so you can go send a reminder, hey, you haven't done this, why haven't you done this, oh, why haven't you done this, uh, type thing. Um, so um, another part of onboarding um, tends to be around gaining the right documents. So um, the other bit that the onboarding workflows can do is we have tasks which are specifically documents that you need to get. So here are the examples of P45 and Passport. Um, if you're UK BA visa sponsors, then you might also need to get a copy of the relevant visas and things like that. Um, and again, you assign this to, so the, the way that it works for us anyway is that if you sponsor somebody, you need to get a copy of all the IDs before they're able to work and somebody needs to actually see the originals and all of those kind of things. So you can build that into your workflow. Um, and it, it'll set up actually a slightly different task list, which is your document task list here. Um, the documents are slightly different, um, and the way that they work is that um, the document, so this one's actually a waiting upload, um, but they have a valid from an expiry date, and you can have the system remind you when it's expiring. So if you've got somebody who is being sponsored for a visa, um, the system will remind you, and you can actually tell, you, tell the system when to remind you. So you can say, well, six months before this expires, and what it will do is it will create actually a new task for you to go and then uh, to uh, go and get, get that document and so on and so forth. But otherwise, it kind of works very similar to a normal task, which is that, okay, I assign this document task to someone, and they should go and get this document, and you can track that that's completed or not completed and so on and so forth. Um, any questions so far? Okay, that's cool. Um, so, how, does, how and if it works with the CDCR? Uh, if you have, a, a, if you are in an organization that has CDCRM and wants to use CBHR, uh, is there a possibility of single login system or something like that, or are there separate? Um, so, so um, there is the possibility of having a single login, uh, but I, I, we would recommend you to kind of do it separately. So, CiviHR basically, I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end. CiviHR basically takes over all of Civi, uh, and you know, kind of repurposes a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So, if you're using those bits of Civi, then it's, it's kind of you can't use that anymore. Um, so, CiviHR is kind of what, what we would call a distribution. So, it's kind of like a, a special form. So, you, you'd probably want to have it separate. It is technically relatively easy actually to have the two of them with single sign-on because they're both Drupal or depending on what you're using but you can do OAuth and all of those kind of things so there's a lot of things out there to do it. Um, so I just mentioned also there's, there's a calendar here uh, so you can kind of see your tasks if there are any tasks um, so I have no tasks uh, and also key dates um, so it gives you a little overview start dates birthdays any dates probation end dates so you can kind of see those in a list as well um, that when those are coming up and that's all part of the email that, that gets sent through to you um, so yes I've mentioned reports okay so that that's uh, a, a little overview I'll, I'll show some of the other things uh, vacancies and and, t uh, and uh, leave uh, in a moment but I just want to mention about the self-service portal so um, that's kind of the HR admin side. Uh, now, only certain people obviously have access to that. On the other side of things, you have the self-service portal, and this is for everybody. Um, so the self-service portal is mobile friendly. Yay, we like mobile friendly things. Um, and um, what does it do? Uh, it's a place for uh, the staff to update their details. So if they've got addresses, uh, emergency contacts, and things like that. So if they've got any dependents, or if they've got uh, next of kin, or whatever it may be, because they can add all of those details. Um, there is the staff directory, wonderful, so that everybody can contact and speak to each other. Um, so that's all in there as well. Um, and um, you have HR resources. So um, we might rename this, but it's, it's policy documents. So if you ever want to put up like you know your policies and your security policy, information sharing policy, your leave policies, whatever it is, there's a place to put those up so that people can't complain that they didn't have the policies. Question about the staff directory. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of working in our organization half-time uh, mm -hmm. um, or part-times. Um, could you make the overview? So let me see all those from that department who are available today. Um, can, can you combine? We haven't got anything that does that at the moment, but I don't think that would be a complicated thing yeah. to, you know, to, to, to kind of build all the data there. Because yeah. I know that's the, the issue right, right now. We, 
have to, to scan through five columns at the same time? Who, who will be available? Well, I'll show you, let me show you the leave module, yeah. and then maybe that will okay. maybe that'll answer a couple of things. So not in the staff directory, but probably in the leave module. The leave module, yes, because if people aren't in there, okay. then, then they're not in there. So I'll, I'll get to that. Um, so, uh, you know, tasks and documents are in here as well. So uh, if, you, if we have a task or a document somebody needs to do, then it's in the self-service portal. So because obviously some of the staff, the managers don't have access to the other side. Um, uh, as I said, I mentioned about the policy documents. So people can download their policy documents and they're all in here as well. Um, and uh, vacancies, which I'll, I'll touch on a little bit later. So that's kind of recruitment. So internally <coughs> published vacancies, though, those are all in there as well. Um, so, yes, is there anything I to kind of say? I don't think so about that. <coughs> okay, so one of the biggest things that we've been working on that literally got released about two weeks ago uh, has been the culmination of over 12 months of work uh, is the new leave and absence module, the new leave module. Um, so we had a leave module. Uh, it allowed people to request leave and people to approve leave and did kind of the basics of it. However, uh, we quickly found out that leave is a very complicated thing. People are very precious about it. Uh, you know, uh, and so we, it needed to do a few more things. So um, the new leave module has um, support for flexible working patterns. So if somebody works two or three days a week, the system understands that will only deduct the days that they actually work. If somebody works a half day on a Thursday, you can say to the system, this is a half day, not a full day. Or if they work a third of a day on a Thursday, or if they work an eighth of a day on a Thursday, you can put that into the system and it understands that that is the case. Um, leave rules. So leave rules for carry forwards of leave. So at the end of the year, it will figure out, okay, well, we're only allowed to carry forward five of these because that's what our rules say. Uh, alternatively, things like toil. You have to take toil within three months. Uh, and if you don't take it within three months, you lose it. Uh, so, you know, also support for those kind of things. So I'll talk about a little bit about that. I'll show you that in a second. Um, the system also doesn't say it here. The system also calculates people's leave pro rata based on their contract lengths. So if you say, okay, well, your contract says that you get 28 days of leave, but actually you're only going to have a six-month contract, the system will work out that that should be 14 days of leave actually is your permitted allowance. Um, Request comment, so you can have a conversation on the leave request. So let's say that somebody's asking for toil, they could say, I put in this request. The manager can go back to them and say, uh, no, I don't, you know, no, I don't think that's the case. Or yes, yes, absolutely, you should have two days of toil. Probably let's go with that, yes, you should have two days of toil uh, type thing. Uh, so you can have those conversations there so they don't get lost in emails, which is what generally happens with the leave. You know, nobody knows why anybody had a leave anyway. Uh, internationalization, so, um, not quite there yet on this one. Uh, this will be in the next couple of weeks as well. But basically, so that if you have different, um, let's say, different leave types or rules for different regions, then you're able to set it up so that only certain people have those leaves basically applied to them. So let's say, so the example of this was Farm Africa. So they had um, six or seven different territories, and the people in uh, Zambia had to have different leave rules, obviously, as the people in the UK. Um, improved calendars, so I'll show you those in a second. Uh, they're super cool, lots more information. Uh, and you can have multiple leave approvers as well. So, you know, the, the multiple managers and all of that kind of stuff. So big, big changes actually. Over 12 months of building, 12, 12 months of scoping even before the build, 12 months of build. Definitely the most complex thing we've ever built. Uh, and we built a lot of complicated things. So let's, let's just show it. Um, okay, so uh, I'll, I'll do it the simple way around first. Uh, my leave. So as a staff member, I can look at my leave calendar. Uh, and again, all of this you know, is, is, is uh, mobile friendly. Uh, and I can kind of just look at the leave that I've taken. So this is just taking up my, I've got a standard working pattern, which is five days, you know, and a uh, normal, you know, seven day a week type thing. Um, and I can record a new absence, request a new absence here. So it's an annual leave. And I could say, okay, well, I want to take off uh, the 23rd until the 31st. And as you can see here, the system's taken a look here. It's worked out uh, all day, all day, all day, weekend, and so on and so forth as to what my deduction should be. If I did a half day AM, uh, it recalculates and so on and so forth. Right. Then I'll whack that in there. Uh, and that will go off to uh, you know my manager. He'll get an email which says you know please uh, please approve this. And you can see here like the calendar's now included this, and it's got a little grey line. I don't know if you can see that, but just to say it's it's requested at this point uh, not approved. Um, 
I'm also the manager in this context, so I don't know if I've actually got a leave request there. Now I've got nothing to uh, say at all. There we go. Um, so here you can see kind of like the open leave requests uh, that have come in. So I would have got an email about it. I could have clicked on that. Uh, and I can then take a look at this and say, OK, uh, this one actually happens to be. So I can actually have a look at the calendar here for the team. Um, let's just do all of it. Uh, people I approve or. Um, so here then, as a manager, you're able to look at the calendar of all the people and say, okay, well on this date that that person's asking for, their, you know, who else is off basically and whether or not I want to allow them. Um, you can actually take a little bit less and just see the people who are only taking leave, which gives you a, a bit of a cleaner kind of view. So I can see that Jake's request here, okay, well he's clashing with Karen, but you know, everybody else seems to be, so this seems to be okay. Right, I'll, I'll probably go in then and I'll, I'll approve this one. So set status to approved. Alternatively, I might say, well actually, sorry Jake, uh, Karen is off uh, and we can't live without the both of you. Um, something lovely like that. Um, so, you know, we could go back and we could say more information required or something like that. Um, oh, you can't, I uh, don't know why I can't do that. I should be able to, why are you letting me do that? Oh yeah, I'm not a leave approver. <laughs> yeah, so I can't do that. Uh, but so the leave approver would be able to do that. Um, labels, <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, but that, that's kind of like the process. Now the managers can record leave on behalf of staff members as well. Um, there's obviously sickness as well. So if I want to, uh, if I want to record sickness on behalf of somebody, or if they want to record uh, sickness themselves, then they can. Uh, there's a few <coughs> extra fields for sickness. I don't know why. Uh, come on, let me. Let's do it this way. Then. So if I record a sickness, uh, I can say the reason for sickness. And actually, you can then have a conversation about sickness. If somebody's long-term off, you might say, well, actually, we need a self-certification form or you know, all of these different things. And this is just an option list, actually. So you can specify any tick boxes that you want to have here uh, and change those. So again, comments, files. So if you need to upload the document, the evidence, or sick note, or something like that, that can all be stored on there. Um, so yeah, so that's you know that's it. There's also overtime. So if somebody works overtime, they can say, okay, this is the overtime that I worked, and this is the the toil that I should accrue. So they can say, well, I worked four days, but maybe your policy is only that they get two days max or something like that, even if they were off for four days. But at least you can record all the information, and of course you can put everything else in the conversation of the comments and so on and so forth. That will then appear as additional uh, leave. Uh, of type toil. So it will come here as toil and that will have its own rules attached to it. So you can set different rules for that toil. Will those rules be overridden? So for example, if it's three months and for whatever reason workload means I can't take it within that three months rather than just losing it, uh, will it be overridden? Yeah, so what happens here, I'll have to remind myself. So let's say here I've put, uh, I worked, uh, let's just say I worked on the sixth toil to be accrued, I think I should have uh, half a day. Uh, so it's saying half a day. And here it's got an expiry date. So when I make the request, it automatically works out what the expiry date is based on the rule <coughs> that we set, and I'll show you the rules in a second. Uh, the manager can change that expiry date if they want to. Um, and the manager can just grant more toil if they want to as well. So if that expires and they think, oh no, it's appropriate to give it. So yeah, so there's lots of flexibility there. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's kind of the, the front facing of it, and it, on the surface that looks really simple. Uh, behind, the, behind the scenes there's lots of very clever things going on. Um, from the admin point of view, so if I take my dude Peter, uh, and I have a look at his absence information, uh, basically I can see the equivalent report you know, from, from the admin's point of view and see what's going on. Uh, see that you know this person's calendar, leave calendar helps you to kind of spot whether you've got problem sicknesses or you know something like that. That he's always off on a Monday. Um, here we've got the uh, entitlements, uh, and I'll get into this I I in a moment. Um, but here we've got the work patterns. So let's talk a little bit about work patterns. So leave an absence, uh, manage work patterns. 
So what you're able to do is you're able to set up work patterns for different people. So uh, you, you'll have a standard work pattern that the system ships with, you know, five days, 37 and a half hour week, uh, maybe you're a 40 hour week. Um, you can always add a new work pattern. Maybe this is for, you know, Sheila because she only works Mondays and Tuesdays. Alternatively, maybe it's the shift workers because they all work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and then also Fridays, Saturdays, something like that. Um, so you can set all of that up in the system. Uh, and you basically say, okay, well, is this a working day, yes or no? If it's a no or it's a weekend, that tells the calendar that. Um, how many hours they work, and then how many days should be deducted for that day. So if they only work half of the day, you can say, well, only deduct half a day. Um, we're actually going to be releasing an update to this in you know, four to six weeks, which will do it by the hour. So if you actually have people's contracts written hours, then you, could, you can move to completely doing things in hours. So really, if somebody's contract says they get 28 days of leave, you, you might be better off doing things in days because it's just easier to work that way even if they've got a flexible working patterns. You might just say, okay, Wednesday is, uh, you know, even if they do nine to, uh, nine to three on a Wednesday, you might just say, well, that's three quarters of a day if you take it off. Um, but other organizations will say actually, oh, okay, you've got 28 times, and our standard day is eight hours long, so it's 28 times eight, which is like uh, 200 or something like that. You've got 200 hours of leave, and we're gonna measure exactly every hour that you're gonna take. So it really depends how you wanna do things. Um, but so you can create these, um, you can create these working patterns, um, which is nice. Uh, and then, as if I go back to Peter, you can then assign it. So you can see that by default, he has the default uh, five day a week working pattern. Um, and then we can add a custom working pattern and just say, oh, from this day, he started working three days a week. And what that basically means then is that, and I'll go to use the copy port one for this. Bit blue Peter, here's one I made earlier. So if then uh, I was to record an absence for that person who had a flexible working pattern, this person doesn't. Come on. Is it being slow? Are we were doing so well with this new internet connection. Shall I go back to the other one? Um, so when it does the calculation, oh, let's do Charlotte, that's why I went to this one. Yeah. So Charlotte actually works uh, three days a week. So if I put in something for Tuesday through to, uh, let's put in a couple of weeks here. Um, what you can actually see is it's, it's taken the non-working days and it's put a zero by those. So it's kind of done all the calculations for you and figured it all out and done, done the appropriate things. That was a lot of work just to show that thing. Um, <laughs> But it was even more work to make it happen, so um, you know, I, I feel justified. Um, so the other thing that's kind of useful is that you get this report, uh, which is kind of the lead balances of each of the staff members and things in one place. So if you're trying to work out who's used what and you're worried about things or need to identify things, then, then you've got this as well. Um, and all of that data also goes into the report, so you can look at leave and absence uh, reports. Uh, there is one I always like to show, which is the waiting for it to load screen. That's my favorite report. Come on. <coughs> oh, I don't want to embarrass the Compu 14 by showing the leave and absence report on our side. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I was going to say, you can do a heat map by day, so, which is quite nice. So you can see kind of like, oh, OK, by department, how many people, what's the, you know, uh, when are people in and when are people not in, and so on and so forth. That's annoying. Why is it we've got all the data, but that bit isn't working. OK, anyway. Moving swiftly on, pretend it never happened. OK, so that's version 1.7. So that's out at the moment. Um, so anybody signs up, that, that's what it does. So, um, you know, we're really proud of it. Uh, the leave module, especially, we think is you know as uh, feature uh, feature complete to uh, most commercial leave management systems. So we looked at those and we compared it and we built our version of that. <coughs> oh, I meant to show one other other thing actually about the uh, leave. I didn't I didn't fully finish that, did I? Uh, so uh, I did the working patterns. I was just going to say you have the absence types. 
so the leave types here. So this is where you configure your rules. So you can have a look down here. There's all sorts of so default entitlement, um, duration of leave that can be taken, can staff cancel requests for the leave type after they've been made? Uh, so yes, uh, yes always, yes uh, only in certain circumstances. Is it a toil type? What's the maximum amount of toil? Default expiry, never expire. It should expire one day's months after. Do you have to take public holidays leave? So you can have, if you've got people who should work on public holidays, you don't have to force them to take them as public holiday if you have people who work on public holidays, that kind of thing. Um, carry forward of leave from one year to the next. So all of that clever stuff's in there. Um, and if people's got more rules and things like that, then we'll be adding them as, as, as people kind of identify them. Uh, so the bit that I didn't show was then the, uh, or I skipped through very quickly, um, was trying to calculate what somebody's entitlement was. So um, if you put it into the job contracts, internet permitting, uh, I, I mentioned it earlier. So uh, if somebody works, you know, six month contract, it will work out what their entitlement is for that year. Um, and I was just going to show you the screens that, that actually do that, but I think we're, we're going to be a bit defeated by the internet today. Um, okay, so that's leave and absence. So that gets us to 1.7, and as I said, that's what, uh, you know, if you, if you get started tomorrow, that's uh, what you'd be using. Uh, and we're currently working on 1.8. Um, and in 1.8, there's going to be lots of uh, fancy new things. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, recruitment. Um, so we've been doing a lot of scoping around recruitment, um, and um, uh, a lot of this is going to be on the internet as well. Okay, I'll, I'll skip over that. Um, so looking at recruitment, and, and basically for recruitment, uh, we've done a lot of work at looking at that, similar to the leave and absence, similar scale of, uh, of, of complexity uh, and thinking, but we want to understand that recruitment is kind of a team effort. Um, and so it's, it's something that everybody from the managers, you know, to the actual HR team, you know, gets involved in. So the idea is that somebody applies online, you have like a form that you can build for that, it comes in, <laughs> you're able to assign, you know, somebody to, uh, have the interviews with people, uh, report back, feedback, collate all that data, and then take somebody through the, uh, the process for recruitment. There is a basic version of recruitment, which I haven't shown in the system, um, and that allows you to create an online form, people can apply, and you can still manage the communications. Um, and, you know, perfectly usable, but um, the new one that we're doing is kind of really complete, going to be a lot more about the team being involved, uh, and the self-service portals and things like that. So, really excited about that. Um, there's uh, we kind of payroll export, so at the moment you're putting the pay information in. Uh, we want to do a bit more than that, so you can kind of put lots of different pay information in, bonuses, all of that kind of stuff. And actually the system can calculate then for you uh, what the payroll uh, should be at the end of the month. So it, it won't do all the tax stuff, but it will probably do all the things like, okay, this person's paid X per day, and they work this number of days, and therefore this is how much they should be paid, and, and so on and so forth. So working all of that kind of stuff out. Also trying to take into account things like pensions and benefits and cycle to work schemes and you know free paper hats, whatever it is that you guys offer um, to, to your teams. Um, looking at asset tracking as well, so being able to store uh, you know what assets that people have. So if you give people mobile phones or if you give them a didgeridoo, that uh, being able to know when they took it and what scratches it had on it. Um, and appraisals and people management. So that's something that we've been looking at as well recording the fact that you have to do an appraisal and that it's taken place uh, and, and so on and so forth. Oh, these are all the slides that I was supposed to go through. Um, so one of the things that I did want to mention as well is that you see all this fancy UI. Um, and you know this, uh, as you saw hopefully a little bit earlier, is the stuff that's translated into the new shortage theme. So we're bringing all of that kind of stuff over into Civi CRM, and we're very excited about that as well. Uh, thanks to you know some other organisations, Amnesty in Spain, Healthwatch, and the Association of Teachers and Lecturers. Um, as Tim mentioned, we're about 70% of the way through all of Civi CRM there, so we're, we're very excited about kind of getting that finished as well. Some screenshots of that. Cool. Um, so 
check out the demo. Um, so you're very welcome to uh, find out more information. Uh, so if you go to civihr.org, um, yeah, it's loading. Great. Uh, so there's more information about the modules of the system. Um, and you're able to view the online demo here. And this demo is kind of periodically reset, so you can kind of have a play with it and, uh, and see kind of the system is everything that I showed uh, today. Um, and, um, and sign up. So I, I, I mentioned uh, about uh, the hosting arrangement. So there's a hosted version uh, that uh, is being made available. Um, and so if you're interested in trying CBHR, then uh, that's free to sign up for uh, up until uh, April 2018. Um, and after they, they were planning to charge one pound uh, per user per month, as I said before, um, with volunteers being free. And if you have any questions, then feel free to contact myself or Andrew, uh, who, who's also involved in the project. Cool, got there. Any questions? Yes, any question? Does it um, integrate with external kind of shared folders? You know, so if you can put it underneath. Not yet. We, we undenied about that actually is kind of something we wanted to do. Uh, and, and the problem is is that you need to, like, it, it's, it's slightly complicated in the sense that, uh, so we, we, we looked at that as a feature that some other uh, leave management systems offer and found that it wasn't actually something that people use because it's actually quite a fiddly thing to set up. Because what you need is the system to publish the calendar and then you need to set some controls about who can see it and so on and so forth. So um, we, we were kind of thinking about what and then you have to also decide upon, do you try and aim for Microsoft Exchange or Office? Or do you try and aim for Google Calendars? Or do you try and, you know, some people maybe even use Lotus Notes, I don't know. So yeah, it, not quite yet, I think, is the answer. Um, but you do have that calendar, obviously, the managers can see. Uh, and that's something that we were thinking of making perhaps a public version of that. So the organizations could choose to make that public within their organization so that anybody can see who else is off, basically. So. If people are at the moment using Drupal and CBCRM, they, and let's say they're hosting it themselves, and they hosted it in a fashion where they'd separate the database for CV and Drupal, if they were looking to integrate this now, would they have to install another instance of CV in a separate database? Yes. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it basically is a separate application. It's yeah. like having two. You know, so you, you've got another CV in Drupal that just does a different thing. Yeah. yeah. Cool, any more questions? That was easy. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers.